Hello friends, and welcome to another figure study where I'm still doing pre- and transforming robots, because there is no end to them. As you can tell from the thumbnail and the title of the video, today we're looking at another Mini Force figure, and that is Mini Force Animaltron Leocop, which is the companion figure to Jaws Cop, which we looked at, uh, boy, by the time this goes up, it's probably going to be a month ago. Point is, it's another one of these. Another one of these weird go on your looking vehicles, and uh, it's it's an odd one. Though I will say, I do actually kind of prefer Leo Cop's vehicle mode. It's the colors I'm kind of neither here nor there on, but compared to Jaws Cop's vehicle, I just, I really like the contours of this. This looks like, I mean, yeah, it's got the silly lion face on the front, but like, I really like the curvature here, how it just kind of sweeps up, but then it kind of abruptly stops and kind of goes in just a little bit and then continues back to this kind of weird looking spoiler. There's just something about the lines and the curvature of the front of this car mode that I really, really like. Getting back to the colors though, uh, the colors here I feel like are not as strong as Jaws Cops. I think it's fine. The very almost pinkish red and the light blue and the yellow, they work well together, it's just not as appealing a color scheme to me. There is some decent detailing on the car as well with these gold and green headlights. There's, of course, the gold teeth for the lion face and the painted eye, which is much like Jaws Cop, it is carved and painted. There's the translucent orange for the lion's mane, which looks kind of interesting. It's almost like energy shooting out of the back. And as with Jaws Cop, he also has the animal symbols in the tires. Here, they're a little bit different. For Jaws Cop, the entire wheel turns. For Leo Cop, the tire turns around the hubcap thing. So the lion icon kind of stays in place while the wheel moves around it, whereas with Jaws Cop, the entire thing spun. The reason I bring that up is because Leo Cop rolls like crap. This car sucks at rolling. It's obviously something to do with the wheel design. I don't know for sure that it's because of the way that the tires rotate around the spokes or rims or whatever you want to call them. All I know is it's not going to move when you try and push it, whereas Jaws Cop is like this really nice, smooth rolling. It's just kind of a shame. Still, I think it looks cool. Oh, also, don't want to forget, I love the little, like, almost imperceptible, unless you're, you know, really looking for the lion motif, but I like the little cat ears that he has on top of his little car head. One other thing I think is kind of cool with Leo Cop, which is a design element that we saw with Jaws Cop as well, is this strip of blue that goes up along the center of the vehicle mode, where it's sort of like this more pinkish red surrounding this blue color, whereas Jaws Cop was a much darker blue kind of surrounding a much lighter blue color. I don't know if there's a thematic reason for it, but it's an interesting design element that I think kind of helps the two of them look like they belong together in vehicle mode, aside from the giant animal faces on the cars, obviously. And much like Jaws Cop, Leo Cop is large. So, as you can see, looking at him next to the standard deluxe squad, this car is quite big. And next to Jaws Cop, they're about the same size, but like I said, they do look like they fit together. And then comparing him to a more modern Tobot, in this case, Tobot v. Wild Chief, uh, it's actually a little bit bigger. It's a little bit chunkier, a little bit beefier, or I guess because this thing is so roundy, puffier. And of course, finally, the duck tank. So yeah, uh, that is it for Leo Cop's vehicle mode. It's like I said, I actually really like this vehicle mode compared to Jaws Cops vehicle mode. I thought Jaws Cops was silly. This one is silly, but it's also got some elements of coolness to it, which I really like. It's just, I'm not as into the color scheme. As for the transformation, transformation on Leo Cop is really kind of interesting. I like transforming Leo Cop more than Jaws Cop. I will admit that. As much as I love Jaws Cop, and as much as I think Jaws Cop looks cooler as a robot, Leo Cop's transformation is just really fun to do. It's a lot simpler than Jaws Cop's transformation. It's a bit less fiddly. You don't have to do that weird thing with the tail and like trying to navigate around a lot of tight cramped spaces. Leo Cop just does not have that. There are two particular things that the transformation does that are really, really cool. First and foremost, and most obviously, is the way that the lion head kind of changes shape to become the torso of the robot. It's really cool how the eyes just kind of push in and the nose pulls down, and it creates a really interesting looking chest design and practically completely makes the lion face disappear. The second thing that I love about that transformation is what happens with the feet. 
because when you look at the legs, when the legs are straight, or what are supposed to be straight, it looks like they're kind of curving backwards, but then you flip forward the toe and there's that double hinge mechanism that completely changes the shape of the shin to make it a properly oriented and cohesive looking foot. And it's such a simple engineering trick, but it works extremely well. It's really cool. I really like how that just completely changes the profile of that part. And what we're left with is this really pretty cool looking guy. I mean, as I said, I think Jaws Cop does look cooler. There's just something about that particular robot design that really appeals to me, but Leo Cop's design is no slouch. This is also a very cool looking robot. And just like with Jaws Cop, you've got this robot that basically completely masks the fact that its vehicle mode looked kind of silly. Though, as I said, I think Leo Cop's vehicle mode is uh, actually kind of cool looking, but it completely covers that up and it's really fascinating and it does it with a surprisingly minimal amount of steps. It's just really smart engineering on this figure. There's some really nice color breakup all over the thing. It switches from like white to black to blue to gold, green, red, blue, black. It's all over the place, but like in patterns that work and it's just a really nifty design. I will say though, unlike with Jaws Cop, I have been tempted to go in and start doing a little bit of detailing on Leo Cop. I don't think he needs it, I just kind of want to do it because I think he looks cool and I want him to look even neater. One thing I noticed when I was uh, messing around with this guy when I first got him that I didn't realize from videos is the pinkish red plastic is actually metallic. There's like a metallic flake in the plastic, which hopefully won't disintegrate over time. I'm hoping that the uh, companies have kind of figured that out by now, but it feels nice and sturdy. Unfortunately, because of the fact that it's like a lightish red, pinkish red, whatever color, uh, it makes it really hard to notice the fact that it's this metallic color. So the effect is kind of wasted, which is kind of a shame. But aesthetically, aside from the fact that I'm just not as into this color scheme as I am into Jaws Cop's color scheme, I don't really have any complaints about this guy. The design is awesome. The colors are, you know, they're totally fine. They work. They're just not as interesting to me. And again, that transformation is just fun to go back and forth with. I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed just grabbing this guy off a shelf and transforming him back and forth for no reason. It would just be like walking through the apartment and be like, I feel like grabbing Leo Cop off the shelf. And taking a look at the robot mode in its full glory, I also love the fact that there's practically no kibble in this guy. Like he does have little bits here and there, like the sides of the car kind of hanging off the cabs and the top of the car on his back, but it's all tucked away or flared out in a way that adds to the overall bulk and design of the humanoid robot mode, rather than feeling like this is just tacked on stuff they didn't know what to do with. And admittedly, around the back, there's not a lot going on. There are some nice molded details back there, but they're not painted. Like, there are little vents on the backs of the shoulders just behind those translucent orange bits. There are some details in the forearms that aren't painted, but it's also the back of the figure, so who really cares? I do think it's kind of weird how with the top of the car, how it tucks away in the back, you're supposed to flare out these little orange bits. These right here, they, they're like that for the vehicle mode, and you just flare them out for the robot mode, and they only go out slightly, and it doesn't really accomplish that much. It does kind of break up the overall silhouette if you're looking at it from the back because these are a little bit flared out more. It makes it look a little bit less like he's got a turtle shell on his back from the front, but it doesn't really accomplish that much. I don't mind that the step is there, I just feel like maybe these could have folded away a different way, like maybe folded in and around the back, like instead of flaring out, fold in like this to really clean up that silhouette. It's whatever. It's, it's nitpicking. Now looking at the head, it is a very kind of uncharacteristically cool looking head considering what the vehicle mode looked like. It's very, I want to say ornate with that incredibly spiky <laughs> forehead V thing. The colors are nice. I like that they incorporated most of the different colors that you get in the body into the head. The only color that's really missing is black. I guess you could argue that there is a little bit of black around the outside of the eyes, but it's primarily that same kind of pinkish red, the blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, slash gold. It does look really nice though. Like I said, it's very ornate, but it's got kind of like a... It's... I know it's cliche to say it looks like a Gundam, but it really does kind of look like a Gundam just in terms of the head shape. The faceplate, no. The faceplate is definitely not Gundam, but the shape of the helmet, the head crest, 
the little jewel thing on top of the forehead. Like, really, if you just imagine that head crest being more pronounced and sticking out a little bit further, it would not look dissimilar to a Gundam head. I'm not saying that is a bad thing. I just think it's a pretty cool looking robot head that, again, I don't think is as cool as Jaws Cop. I do think it's cool how Leo Cop also manages to continue that tradition. I say continue that tradition, like I know what order these things came out in, but essentially it continues the same design element that we saw with Jaws Cop, where Jaws Cop's head had little hints of the animal elements, I guess, to its vehicle mode, in that the head, if you look at it through the lens of this guy turns into a shark car, the head looks a little bit like a shark. Leo Cop has a similar thing where, yeah, his head doesn't look like a lion, but if you look at it from the side, you can see that the way the helmet is shaped, it kind of goes back in a way that's very similar to that robotic lion's mane design from the vehicle mode. So it does kind of have a lion's mane thing going with the head. Definitely not as pronounced as what was going on with Jaws Cop, but still, I like that they continue that element here. In terms of articulation, uh, this is one of Leo Cop's less than stellar points. He does do articulation a little bit better than Jaws Cop in some places, but a little bit worse in others, and in some of the places where he does worse, it really is a shame. Head swivel's just fine, didn't have to mod it or anything like that, which is great. Uh, you can't really look up and down, you can kind of fudge looking up a little bit if you move the transformation panel, but if you move it up too far it looks ridiculous. The arms go full 360, which is great, but then the up and down movement on the shoulders is not great. You get a little bit of butterfly motion on the shoulders as well, just because of this transformation. You get bicep swivels, which is great. That's one key bit of uh, articulation that Jaws Cop was missing, so it's great to see it on Leo Cop. Problem is, Leo Cop has the bicep curler arms, where the elbows bend inward. And I hate it. I really, really wish they had done proper elbows. Or given him wrist swivels, which he doesn't have that either. Probably due to the transformation, you don't get a waist swivel, which is fine. I don't really expect waist swivels on these guys. Forward motion on the hips is kind of hampered because of all the geometry there. You get some pretty decent backward motion. Outward motion is really nice. There's thigh swivel. And one place where Leo Cop definitely excels over Jaws Cop, he's got double knees that can bend all the way in because of the transformation. Jaws Cop did have double knees, kind of, but there was so much robot shark car jaw junk behind his legs that it kind of prevented the knees from being able to bend more than 90 degrees. And then you can also move the toe up and down if you want, but it doesn't really accomplish anything. So the articulation with Leo Cop is better than Jaws Cop in some places, not better than Jaws Cop in others, but it's fine, it's a trade-off. And like I said, it's a cool robot, not as cool looking in my opinion as Jaws Cop, but that transformation is a lot of fun. Now as for size comparisons, just like with Jaws Cop, Leo Cop is pretty darn tall. Looking at him next to the standard deluxe squad, he towers over everything. Which is to be expected, really, but he is very big. Standing next to Jaws Cop, they're roughly about the same height. There's like a little tiny bit of almost imperceptible height difference between the two, but they're basically the same height, and they look great together. I still vastly prefer the colors and the overall shape and design and contours of Jaws Cop, because as I said, it's just a shockingly cool looking robot design. But Leo Cop's design is really cool, and seeing the two of them side by side is just neat. They look really cool together. They complement each other very well. And putting Leo Cop next to Tobot the Wild Chief, you can see that uh, he's, as with Jaws Cop, a fair bit taller than a current Tobot figure as well. Although I will say Wild Chief definitely wins in terms of articulation here, but still, Leo Cop's a big toy. And then finally, the duck tank. And that is going to do it for Mini Force Animaltron Leo Cop. And as I said, not my favorite design in terms of robot aesthetics, primarily because of the colors, but also Jaws Cop is just an extremely difficult act to follow. But he's still really cool. If I had gotten Leo Cop first, I'm not saying I would have liked him better than Jaws Cop, but I probably would have been like, oh, this is a really awesome robot mode until I got Jaws Cop, but since I got Jaws Cop first, it's like, this is a really cool robot mode, but Jaws Cop is even cooler. I do wish that some of this yellow was gold, though, because they did put gold in a few places, and that just kind of makes the fact that the yellow plastic is sort of being used as a pseudo-gold stand out more. If I really wanted to, I could paint it myself, but I don't think I want to. <laughs> I think this guy's fine as he is. Really, my only legitimate gripe is the articulation and 
considering how often I try and do dynamic posing with these kinds of figures, it's not that big a deal. I just want him to stand there looking cool and imposing on the shelf, and he pulls that off without having regular elbows, so it's fine. And really, for as much as I prefer Jaws Cop's design, as I've said, Leo Cop's transformation is a blast. I think of the two, Leo Cop is probably, as much as I hate to admit it, is probably the better toy just because he's more playable. There is the toss-up where, while he's much more fun to transform back and forth, Jaws Cop rolls much better in the fact that Jaws Cop actually rolls. I guess if you're looking for a robot that can turn into a car that you can play with, then Jaws Cop's the way to go because you can actually play with that car. Plus, Jaws Cop has the opening and closing car mouth Jaws thing, whereas Leo Cop cannot open his mouth. If you're looking for a car that can turn into a robot that you can play with, then Leo Cop's probably your best bet because that transformation is just so much fun and a lot less fiddly than Jaws Cop. But that's gonna do it for Leo Cop. I've talked on enough about this. I'm really kinda hoping, I don't know for sure if they're gonna do it because I don't watch the show or anything like that, but I kinda hope that they do more of these because I would love to see more weird go on your animal car type things that turn into really cool looking robots which means we're probably not going to but i can dream what do you all think of me force leo cop here whatever your thoughts feel free to chime in down below i always enjoy hearing from you all if you like this video or any of the other videos i've done and you want to support the channel outside of watching the videos in the first place i do also have a patreon it is a single tier for one dollar it's the only tier i've got and that will support the channel get you early access to new videos as they come out and will get you access to the occasional behind the scenes posts that i might make previews of upcoming things i'm doing in progress photos of customs i'm working on that kind of thing and eventually if i get enough people i'm hoping to start doing polls so patrons will actually be able to have a say in what might go on the channel in the future so if any of that sounds appealing that is an option links in the description and the end card but other than that, thank you everybody for watching, and remember, art is more than meets the eye.